But every time I come around here, this part of the stage, I, I think it has to do with, with my salvation uh, because uh, some 36 years ago, I got saved under the ministry of Dr. Jeff Adams. Um, the year I got saved, Steve Kern moved to El Salvador as a mission. And that's the year I met Julio Contreras too. So the three of us started working together. We love uh, evangelism, and we noticed that we love evangelism and discipleship. And uh, through the years, the Lord laid in our hearts uh, the desire to start a church strong in evangelism and strong in discipleship. And, uh, and that's how God gave us the grace to participate in the beginning of the uh, new life at the church in El Salvador. After 17 years, God called us to go to Guatemala. And uh, we've been there for 13 years, and it's nice. It's, it's, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just wonderful to see people get saved and, and, and want to learn the Bible. I know it's been hard. Two very hard years with COVID and, 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 and the pandemic yeah, hasn't been uh, well managed there. You know, I said it last night, corruption is the rule in Central America. But we won't talk about that. It's, it's hard. So basically we've been doing ministry uh, through the web, online, right? But uh, still online people keep getting saved. And they want to study the Bible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful, you know. About two two days ago, my wife and I called a lady who wanted to talk to us from the Canary Islands in Spain, and uh, she said, hey, "We want to talk. I want to talk to you too." She said, "This is my story." We talked to her a video call for two hours. She wanted to tell us her story. She said, I want you to know that I am, I, I have been a Jehovah Witness for 30 years, knocking on doors and, and, and spreading lies. That's, that's what she said. But uh, I don't know, about, I would say five years ago, yeah, it was five years ago, I had to check the guy on YouTube. His name is uh, Bo Conway. He's a, is a pastor, and he started a channel called The One Minute Apologist. I don't know how familiar he said, how about doing something like that in Spanish? So I'll do The One Minute Apologist in Spanish. I'll call it The Truth in One Minute. <laughs> the initials in Spanish is B-U-M. B for verdad, U, one, a minute. But I've never been able to do a, a one minute. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, this lady said, you know what? Someone gave me one of your videos. And uh, I had heard that it was through the blood of Jesus, sacrifice of Jesus. And I, and I asked myself, she said, isn't it enough to trust Jehovah? But then I learned that he had a song. And, and I started checking the videos. She said, well, anyway, I got saved. I can say, and uh, I want to start a discipleship. To make a long story short, they're starting the discipleship. My wife and her next week. She is so happy. She's happy. But anyway, this is just to say that many wonderful things are happening online. We would tend to think, no, we better go back to you know uh, uh, getting together and everything. It's just like like you guys, but but. Things start to happen. We just, I don't know, it, it closes and the person closes and then he opens and then he closes and, you know, that's what the church is right now. So we're trying to go back to normal. We've lost many people, like many churches, you know. Some people might not even come back again, but, but we're trying. Um, my wife and I have been married for three years. And we have three daughters. Yes, one's getting married uh, soon. The other one, the second one, lives and ministers in California. And we just dropped the baby in California Baptist University. 
So we're empty nesters. Uh, like many of you, right? I said last night, that this is what I've learned now. It's like I'm having a, an aha moment, right? It's just that uh, uh, you better be a good friend with your spouse. <laughs> because when they're gone, when the kids are gone, it can be heaven or it can be hell. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm in heaven now with her because we've been good friends. Better be good friends, you know. Uh, she survived cancer and she told me, please make sure you say hi to the class we talk. <laughs> um, let me see what I have here. Oh, yes. The day we opened, we had 11 baptisms. This just happened about a month ago. And it's wonderful. Um, I am very glad with, with, with the guys, the ladies in our church who keep doing ministry online, even when everything's shut down, you know, when we're locked down. And then, and when we saw that, and that, that's Vinicio over there baptizing with me. He got saved, I don't remember Vinicio? Vinicio, he got saved with us some uh, 10 years ago now. He's, he's, he's a pastor, and he's preaching right now. That's I'm here, it's just wonderful. Uh, so 11 people got baptized, and you, you, you might tend to think, ah, no, we're not getting together in a regular service, uh, but, but, but things are happening online. Amen. You know? uh, we're very glad. I know it's in Spanish, but what they basically said is a body of life in a body of death. And this is based on Romans. Uh, I should have opened your Bible to Romans chapter Seven. Romans chapter seven. Uh, Romans chapter seven. Verse sixteen and seventeen.
I recommend the book of Romans. It's a great book. I think the Holy Spirit with Paul, the Apostle Paul, they knew that this letter had to be different from the other letters because it was going to Rome. And Rome was like the capital of the whole world in those days. So it was, it was a letter that was not to be like the other letters. It had to be very special. So it's just a book so rich in theology, in deep theology. Like chapter five and six deals with justification. We've been justified. We've been declared just, which is great. Chapter 7 deals how to not pursue sanctification, but he has us to be sent. Not that we're justified, we need to be sanctified. Not that we have been declared innocent, Paul says, then live like an innocent man and an innocent woman. <laughs> That's what he says. Not through the law, not through legalism. In fact, the, this chapter, chapter 7, mentions the law 27 times. Legalism is justified by grace and sanctified by the law. But then, Paul will deal with a very serious obstacle disciples and new believers encounter, or we all encounter. And that is, we sin. We sin. We sin because our fallen nature is alive, simply, right? We live inside this vessel, which is flesh. I remember one time when a, uh, a missionary came to uh, San Salvador with Jeff Adams, um, and uh, he came with three other missionaries. He was not the main guest, but he was called to come to the pulpit and say hello to the congregation. And he said, hello, my name is, he said his name. I just want to say that I live inside this body. And Almost all of this body asks for, it's not convenient for me. And all how it asks for, <laughs> all, and all how it demands, and it's true, we live inside a vessel which is flesh. I know this is very basic. Before we got saved, we had a dual nation. Now, what do you mean by dual nation? First Corinthians says that the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can we know them because neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What are we talking about? Well, this is this was our dual nature before we got saved. Just a body and a soul. And the death part, the, the spiritual part, with dead. And you know that. When we were saved, we were three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. And, and it's amazing to find out that God gave life to that spiritual melting. Ephesians 2 1 says, And you have, and you had the people who were dead in trespasses. That's what we were. And, and God came into us and made us alive. And this is just beautiful. I mean, it's just that amazing. And isn't it amazing? Yes. Like, 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 like Dallas Werner used to say, what an amazing life we have in the kingdom. We haven't been dead, but now we are alive. And we are able to see Things that most of the people don't get to see and enjoy. It's amazing. We have three parts now. You know it very well. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace and sanctify your own. 
you holy. And I pray, God, your old spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's amazing that now this is what happened. <coughs> we have a body, a soul, and the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And according to 1 John, that melts, that, that spiritual melts, and not sin. It's beautiful. This has never happened before. When the Bible says that he who is in Christ is a new creature, yes, we say, yeah, the old things are past and now he may be new. But I'm pretty sure he's talking about a creature, a, a type of creature that has never existed before. Not even in the Old Testament. So we're new creatures in Christ. Never had the universe seen this before. And it's amazing. Such Nelson, the Bible says, was created by God in justice and holiness. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 4.24. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It is beautiful to know all this, but still, we sin. Why? Why? That is the obstacle I want to talk about. We still sin. I know the Bible encourages us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And especially in missions, it is necessary that the missionary walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. It is very, but very, very hard to see a new church grow if the missionary has something hidden and live in the flesh. That can be done. But we still sin. But why? <laughs> this morning I was remembering a very good book. I recommend books, but the first book I recommend is the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you have time, John Orberg, in that beautiful book, The Life You've Always Wanted. He redefines sin. And he says that sin is a licit desire, a licit appetite, attempting to be satisfied in an illicit manner. Am I clear? For example, I'm hungry. Is it wrong to be hungry? No, it's not. Because if it's wrong, then God made a mistake when he made my body. That's a licit desire. That is a licit, uh, that is something licit that my body wants. But if, but if they attempt to satisfy it in an illicit manner, then it is sin. For example, it's 12 noon in Guatemala. Let's say San Salvador. I'm hungry. But I don't have any daughter in me. And we get, that's a currency in San Salvador. You know that? In El Salvador, dollars. And I see a lady making pupusas. And she turns, she says, I don't have any money, but I want a pupusa. And I go, sneak, sneak, and when she turns, I take two of them, and I run, and I eat it. Okay, that is a licit desire in my body, attempting to be satisfied in an innocent manner. 
that is sin. And the same with any other appetite in my flesh. It's listed. All of the appetites of the flesh are listed. They become sin when I try to please them in an illicit manner. But then we sin. Why? Romans 7 through 17, 7, 7, 17 through 27, which is read. Paul said, but then I find a law, and that law is not the Mosaic law. It's a law, like a physical law, it's a law in the members of the body. But then I find a law that when I will do good, evil is present in me. And we're talking about Paul. And when we preach this and when we teach you, we're not justifying a sinful life. And Paul was not justifying a sinful life here. He was trying to explain a solid truth. I find a law that when I will do good, I see that evil is present in me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members. And that's not the Mosaic law either. That's not the, the law of the Old Testament either. It's talking about his members and, and different laws. Now, there's so many different laws in the universe. And he says, but I see another law in my members, worrying against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Wait a minute, you're talking about Paul, the Apostle Paul. The truth is that God set us free from the penalty of sin, but not from the presence of sin. He, he, there's no way that can happen. The only way is that we die and we go to heaven and deal with it. Then we are free from this body. But this is what he said. But Nelson, this is so basic. Yes, but believe me, in what mind? Churches are not teaching this to new believers, and they need to know it. Because they get saved on Monday, but on Saturday, they sin again. And if you don't teach them this too, they say, oh, they fooled me. Because I thought I would never sin again. God set us free from the penalty of sin, but he did not set us free from the presence of sin. And that is what the Apostle Paul is saying. Let me put it this way. Um, I know we've always tried to explain repentance. And this is what repentance is. David and I we were talking about this on the way here in the car. Each and every one of us is walking in life with two things in our minds and our hearts. One is the concept of God. We all have a concept of God. Even if someone says, no, I don't believe in God. Okay, that's your concept. Some are Catholic, Mormons, whatever. But that's your concept of God. Walking, say in that direction, you have that in your heart. And number two, you have a set of habits that define your lifestyle, right? Sometimes the second one is a result of the first one, but not necessary. The best example in the Bible is the Apostle Paul. He was on his way to Damascus. And on his way to Damascus, he had. Two things on him. Number one, 
the concept of God that he had. He believed with all his heart that it was the law and the prophets. And that was his concept of God. And that this Jesus Christ that they were talking about around was a liar. And he had a lifestyle. And his lifestyle was, he's, he's, he's really lighted in the fact of capturing, legally capturing Christians, giving them to the government, so that they would, they would end up in the circus, in the Roman circus, or killed by Nero, or any of the Caesars, right? That was his life. So he, had, he was on his way to the mosque with both. The concept of God that he had, the law, and his lifestyle, which was get Christians, put them in jail, legally. I have the paper on my knee. I have the letters with which I can do that legally. Okay, going back to repentance. We all go in life with those two things. Remember, before you got saved, you had your own concept of God, didn't you? And you had your own lifestyle. I remember mine. I was Catholic. I believed with all my heart that trying to fulfill the Ten Commandments was the way to be in peace with God. And I had a lifestyle. So they've been to drugs. I don't want to talk about it. And, and I was going in that in life. And all of a sudden, we heard that Evelyn, my sister, my younger sister, had gotten saved. And my father was a doctor in the law. My brother, my mom, and I were Catholic started telling her, oh, they wash your brain, oh, you dummy, oh, you, you know. <laughs> Sound familiar? <clears throat> but she kept praying and fasting for all of us. This is the beautiful thing. We all got to say, I'm good to fight. There's, there's Evelyn telling me, Nelson, we need to repent and believe in the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is Jesus Christ died for you know, 1 Corinthians 15, first five chapters. Jesus Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he raised again on the third day. Nothing less, nothing more. Okay, after many months, I remember I was doing that. I was, I was, I was a pothead in the ocean with my buddies. And all of a sudden I told him, hey, I noticed that we talk about different things. We talk about politics, we talk about, about medicine. We were, we were sixth year of medicine, med school. Um, we talk about everything, but we never talk about God. And I remember one of the guys took some drug out and he said, go ahead, do this one, and you'll get closer to God. And we all laughed. Ah. And I said, I guess I'm looking for God where I will not find him. And everything that Evelyn had told me was in my heart. And I said, guys, do you mind if I take the towel and I walk? No, no, it's okay. We'll keep talking. Go ahead. So I kept walking. And, and, and the beach that day, for some reason, was I guess God had prepared the scenario. <laughs> no one there. And I remember I sat down. I, 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 I was really stoned. And I said, God, see, I had the ocean right there with the waves, but if you really exist, if you're Jesus, the one my sister's been telling me about. Why don't you get me out of here? And I started crying and crying and crying. And I remember I told him, 
I want to know you. And after about an hour weeping and talking to God, because I think that's what I got saved. He took a towel. No, I remember I went into the ocean, it was a, a really high wave, and he took me up, and then boom. And believe me, I was not stoned any longer. <laughs> All of a sudden, it was okay. And I went back to my friends, took the, 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 the keys to the car, because I had a car. I, 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 picked, I used to pick them up and take them to the beach. And I told them, guys, let's go. It's over. They thought the meeting was over, but I was talking about something different. It's over. Really? It's too early. Yes, but it's over. I gotta go. So I took him to the home, went back home, and told Evelyn, I guess I just received Jesus. Evelyn started dancing. <laughs> and the next day, I went to Miramonte Baptist Church for the first time. And there was this Dr. Jeff Adams. And I prayed again. All of that just to tell you that this is true repentance. And then you turn around, I mean, you're going in that direction. And number one, the concept of God you had was wrong. And you had the real one. Jesus Christ is God. And number two, the life that you used to love, now you hate. You say, I don't want it anymore. You know, been 36 years after my last going. <laughs> and I turned, then you turned, and the life, the clean life that Jesus Christ puts before you, now you love, now you decide. <clears throat> That is true repentance. And I know we talk about repentance, the Greek, uh, uh, metanoia, the change of heart, and it's true. But that is true repentance. Dallas Wither says that the true repentance is the guy who, 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 who knows Jesus Christ for real will arrange his agenda to sit down with someone to learn the things that Jesus Christ taught. And that's what I did. I remember a small group, young one of them, and then you keep, you keep walking. But when you keep walking, this is what happens. You fall. Why did I sin? <laughs> but the true Christian gets up, he looks back, says, No, that's the life I used to I, I don't want it. Right. And 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 that's my that was my concept of God. I don't want it anymore. <clears throat> so you keep walking. Jesus Christ is my Lord now. I'm in love with him now. And I want a clean life. We sin because our carnal mind does not subject to God. Period. Well, the Bible says in Romans 8, by the way, the same apostle Paul says, because the carnal mind is empty against God, for it is not subject to the law, neither indeed it can be. It can't. He can't. Paul sadly found out that truth in Romans 21 to 33. When he says, I find that a law, when I will do good, evil 
distress it with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. He also warns that the old man grows corrupt. And that is something we need to know. I was telling Steve recently. Oh, but Steve, you know, when we get older, the older we get, um, the more we love God. And he said, not necessarily. Not necessarily, Nelson. And I said, you know what? You're right. You can grow corrupt. No matter how old we are. <laughs> Ephesians 4.22 says that he put up a concern for me conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the simple lusts. And any of us, any of us can fall into that. I mean, we're capable. And then Paul ends up this this Paragraph, and I'm about to finish, don't worry. <laughs> Say a very deep truth. When he sees all that, we're like miserable mourners tied to a body of death. He says in verse 24, O rich man that I am, who shall deliver me? From the body of this day. I was reading, finding out that there were some tribes in the past, and even the Romans used to do it, that when a criminal was caught, they would look for the body of the person he had killed. And they would tie with a chain the body of the victim, which was there, to the criminal and put him in a special prison. Just him and the victim that was there. You know what intention it had? The body will start to decay after a while. And all of that decay in that small room, he was forced, because he had killed him or her, to smell it, to come into his body. It would happen a lot that this murderer would end up dying from the same decay of his victim. My goodness. Some theolog theologians, I don't know how to say it, some people who study theology, think that Paul was probably thinking about this fear when he wrote that down. But at the same time, he was talking about the human body of a Christian that has different laws that go against the law of the Spirit. All oh, rich men that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this man? That's what I'm saying. And, and Paul was not justifying a sinful life that many have said. Or we don't teach this truth because we want to justify ours. The new believers need to understand this whenever we start a church. Whatever. And the end is what I love the most. The last verse of this morning is what I love the most. All oh, rich man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? That the answer is, thank you, sweet Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. 
that you have guaranteed us yes. eternal life. We're your sons and daughters, and we make mistakes, but we love you, and we are sure we'll spend eternity with you. Amen. What an amazing life we have in the kingdom, don't you think? Yes. Verse 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fact, that's not the end of the verse. Come with me to verse 25, please. Romans 7, 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Now, what he's saying is with my heart, I will continue to walk in that direction now and that for no reason I'll go back. I will serve the Lord with all my heart and with all my mind. But there's a reality. With the flesh, I gotta continue to serve the law. The law of sin. Sad, but true. What I just share with you is not so that you go out today and say, oh, Nelson said we can sin. That's fine, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a solid truth. In fact, read the verses before. Read the context, the rest of the, the verses before and the verses after that. And Paul encourages us to walk in the spirit yeah. and not in the flesh. Yeah. I love you guys. Amen. Amen.